Hi, my name is Justin with Justin Paul Management, and I'm going to be talking with you today about understanding a profit loss statement. The profit loss statement is actually referred to more commonly as the income statement or possibly a PL. And what the profit loss statement actually tells you is how a company's gross profits are transformed into net profits. And gross profits are all the money that a company made throughout a year. But as you know, a company has expenses that it takes to run the business. So what you look at when you're looking at a, at a profit loss is where the company spent how much money. And at the bottom line, if you will, of the statement is the net sales. And that shows you actually how much the company made. The other common business statements that you would see are the balance sheet or the uh, cash flow statement. So um, for this example, I've actually created a fictitious company called Larry's Lemonade. So let's look at Larry's uh, uh, P&L, see how his company's doing, and see whether or not he actually made a net profit. All right, so here we are. We're talking about the profit loss statement for Larry's Lemonade, also referred to more commonly as the income statement. And what can be both um, in incredibly informative and confusing about the income statement or profit loss statement is that many of the numbers that you would expect to be negative are expressed in a positive. But the main thing to understand about a, an income statement or a P&L is that from top to bottom you can see kind of the flow of how and where a company um, spent money and how they made money. So let's start at the very top and kind of work our way down to the bottom and, uh, and kind of go over some of these terms. Uh, the, there at the very top is the total revenue. That's how much Larry made. He made $1,000. And um, what that, that is before any expenses are figured or anything. That is just a, a clear, pure statement of how much money uh, Larry's Lemonade actually made. The cost of revenue is also referred to as the cost of goods sold, if you're in a retailing business, for example. That actually expresses you know, how much money they had to spend on items. For example, Larry would probably buy lemons, sugar, plastic cups, things like that. So Larry had to spend $200 to make that money. And so therefore, underneath that, you see a gross profit of $800. Again, those terms are both expressed in positive, so you have to understand what you're looking at. Under the next section are the operating expenses. And these are just more of some more common um, fields that you would see on an income statement. Uh, for example, under the, the operating expenses, we see research. And let's say Larry spent $75 researching uh, the best recipes and getting some training on how to make lemonade and his general costs basically selling general and admin refer to all of the normal expenses that a company would have to do to run a company to run a business uh, you're gonna have to pay employees your managers um, general uh, payroll and taxes things like that all of that are usually underneath the selling general and admin and so it looks there it's that Larry spent five hundred dollars to run his business and he had a non-recurring, uh, let's say it was a small bill, $25 uh, for some expense. And then there's a, col there's a column for others, and he didn't have any others. So his total operating expenses there were $600. So referring back underneath the gross profit up top, we subtract 800 or 600 from 800 and come up so far with uh, an operating income or loss of $200. Below that is the income from continuing operations section. And uh, there are uh, usually, if you see, if you look up a publicly traded company, you'll see a whole list of different items under there. So this can be especially confusing because most of these numbers here, again, are expressed in a positive, and, but they're being subtracted from the, uh, the gross profit. So the first line there is total income, other expenses net. And this company didn't make any money. But let's say Larry's Lemonade also owned uh, or was renting out a small section of his stand to somebody for advertising. And he would express that number often there to show that he did make money in another way. He's not telling you how. He's just telling you that he did. Uh, then below that we have earnings before interest and tax, which in this case is... Uh, um, since we didn't make any extra money, it's still just $200 from that operating income or loss just above it. Uh, let's say he had to spend $10 on servicing some debt that he has. He may have uh, got a small loan out to buy some equipment, and that cost him $10 to pay for that debt. So the next underneath there, income before tax, is that earnings before interest and tax, or EBIT, 
uh, minus the $10 for interest expense. So now we have $190 before tax. So the next section is income tax expenses, and that was $20 in this example. If it is a non-publicly traded company, uh, for example, uh, an LLC that may not have to pay income taxes, you may see a zero there. And that just is a corporate expense, not what the individual stockholders or uh, managers had to pay. So when you take that income, ta income before tax, which is $190, minus the income tax, you see net income from continuing operations is $170. So there are some other expenses that the company had to pay that it doesn't want to express in detail maybe in this statement, but, and it, there it shows up in the other section of $15. So finally we get to the bottom line of the company, and its net income is $155. But uh, there you have it. That's how you'd really uh, read a profit loss statement and, and uh, should help you as you are going through. If you're handed one of these statements, you know what you're looking at and how the uh, income flows through that statement.